Tat, we were waxing poetic about all your great tweets and your sort of theory now that there's this bifurcation in the economy and particularly the data. Consumer confidence up, CEO confidence down. Manufacturing down, small business hiring looks yep. like it's finally starting to trough. You could cherry pick the data points and make a pretty strong argument either way right now. I, the one thing, though, I, I heard your comment about uh, comparing the manufacturing recession to what we went through in 2015 and 2016. I think a couple of important differences. One, that was largely due to the energy sector, so it had much more of a concentration. This, of course, is broader as it relates to trade and as across the spectrum of manufacturing uh, sort of subcomponents and, and industries. For now, the services side is hanging in there. And then, of course, you're, you're witnessing it in business investment, which is in contraction, and the consumer, which is strong. And it's interesting. I spoke yesterday up on the main stage here and uh, showed a chart that looked at the most recent NABE survey. And I think in the first time in history, the number one answer for both what's the biggest upside risk to the economy and what's the biggest downside risk to the economy was the same answer. In this case, it was trade. And that's the environment we, we're in. We, we saw it initially, the trade uncertainty was initially felt in the soft data, in the survey-based data, in the confidence data. But now it's actually morphed into actual activity. And, and that's why I think we have to be careful about saying as long as the consumer uh, stays afloat, because if we start to see it morph through, say, the employment channels, that's when you start to see a risk of not just a manufacturing recession, but a broader recession. As of Friday's jobs report, you know, so far so good, we're not seeing it, but that's what I'd pay attention to.